This is Brett Conte. He has 821,000 subscribers and 135 million views. His day job? A full-time YouTuber traveling around the world making content. Oh, well. But not too long ago, he wasn't. All right, recording. Hi. Delivering burgers for a living, Brett never gave up, and through sheer hard work and a lot of trial and error, do not give up, developed some of the most interesting content strategies we've ever seen. Today, we sit down with him to dissect those strategies piece by piece and deliver them to you to blow up your channel. Welcome to The Boost by vidIQ. Everyone, welcome to The Boost. And no, there's nothing wrong with your screen. I'm not Rob Wilson. <laughs> <laughs> no, obviously not Rob Wilson. I'm Travis, and I have been here since 2019 helping creators just like you. And But I actually am Dan Carson. No, stop it. You're <laughs> way cooler than Dan Carson. Oh, I Can't thought you were going to say you? prettier. Uh, if I say that, I might get canceled. So I'm definitely not saying that. <laughs> well, what, who are you? I'm Jen, and I'm a coach here at vidIQ, and I have been around since the launch of our one-on-one -on -one coaching. Which is literally why we're here. Uh, I think Jen and I have been talking for quite a bit about helping creators get to that next level. And there's tons of different podcasts out there that do a really great job, but then there's some of them out there that are just very vague and like what you're supposed to do. Sure, you got an interview with a creator and you got to hear their story, but how does that apply to you? And we were talking and we were thinking, what if we just did it in a way where we not only talk to creators that have done it and done everything that you've ever wanted to do, grow your channel, but ask them how. How? Jen, this is what we're doing. This is the boost. But it's really crazy though, because I don't know what goes into other creators like actually making their content, but we're about to find out. And I think we need to be very specific in exactly what you can do to have the same success as these creators. How are they going to get that viral moment that we all want? I stole your line. We stole it. <laughs> How dare you? I was going to say I know where you live, but you keep moving, so I have no idea where you live. First one up is Brett Conti. He's done some really incredible content, but he started a lot like many of you uploading videos when he was in high school just for fun and now it's a business let's get into that welcome brett how you doing i'm doing great thank you guys so much for having me and i'm so excited to talk with you guys i've been a, a fan of everything that you guys have been doing individually and as a company so i'm stoked to get into some details about youtube can't wait well we are equally excited let's do this brett let's get into this first video this is the i switched lives with a billionaire for 24 hours talk to us a little bit about how this video came to be we're going to real quick look at the thumbnail how did you come up with this particular thumbnail i'll be pretty obvious and how did the concept of this video even come up I have a bucket list of video ideas that I just really want to do. Not even for views where I'm just like, I want to do this. I would want to see this on YouTube. Like, what would I like be so stoked on if I saw like maybe one of my favorite creators post it? And this video Love is that. at the top of that list, which was I switch lives with a billionaire. Even saying it out loud, I'm like, that sounds so cool. Like, what, what would that be like? So I just knew that I knew that it would work. But I must say, that thumbnail, top three most stressful things to make. Like, I wish I could show you guys the other iterations because they looked so different than this. This is literally what I was going to ask. I see a thumbnail like this and I'm like, okay, this is a lot of work went into this thumbnail. A lot of planning went into this thumbnail. How many editions of this thumbnail do you think was made? It took three days for the thumbnail Ooh. and I had multiple people working on it. The mysterious curiosity of the silhouetted person, like who is this billionaire? Maybe I know him. What does this guy do? The net worth of 4 billion. So I feel like there was a lot of different little key things in this one image that got people to click. When we make a thumbnail, we want to see how many questions you instantly ask yourself when you see it. And the fact that you just listed off like four different questions right away looking at this is, you know, exactly what you try to go for. Let's get into the video. <laughs> I'm curious, like, what the heck this video is about. So let's watch the first 20 or 30 seconds and let's see what type of things we walk away with. Are you really in in exchange for Mark's job, I'm confused. I am. Have you ever wondered what the life of a billionaire is like? Yes, billionaire with a B. 
well in today's video. I'm not only going to show you what life is like for them, but I'm going to live it for myself. Today, I'm switching lives with a billionaire. There are only around 2,000. Uh, I mean, I love it. I love I'm all it. about that life. By the way, I love that. I have an RC car <laughs> like this. This is close. I'm never going to get to this car. Um, <laughs> so you 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 open up with like, have you ever? I love when you talk to the viewer because there's a couple of creators I, I I deal with that speak directly to the viewer in their video, which I think is so important. Sometimes we're just talking, but you are specifically asking the viewer a question. Have you ever thought? what it would be like to be a billionaire. Like that's, that then engages the person who's watching. Cause they're already kind of thinking, okay, you switch lives a bit. What is, have you ever thought about? It? Of course I have. Now you're showing them a bunch of visuals of what that might look like. Um, and, and then a, a, you're a mysterious person, like who's this guy? And like, what is he talking about? Who's this other, who's this Mark guy, right? Like all these things. And now you're showing this incredible lifestyle that we've all wanted to live at one point or another. And then you're saying, I'm going to get to do it. So, Again, you're like reestablishing everything about this video. So how long did it take you to, to edit this first intro part? And what kind of uh, thought process went into this whole intro? So much. This one was also, <laughs> you know, the thumbnail, the editing on this video. So right there, that's not just mysterious guy. That's Alex Rodriguez, one of the greatest Yankee players of all time, who is all, a pretty recognizable face. You know, he used to be married to J-Lo. So I feel like having him in that intro is also like, wait, why is A-Rod in this video and it's because the billionaire uh owned an nba team with a rod um so i feel like the intro i had also a lot of different iterations and this one captivated me the most personally and i guess it captivated a lot of other people as well so let's talk about that real quick i know that not every creator who's watching this is gonna be able to do this but this is such a fascinating thing how do you get a hold of someone that's so rich and powerful to do a YouTube video with you? It has a lot to do with timing, where it just so happened that Mark Lore, he sold his company to Walmart for $4 billion, and then he became the CEO of Walmart e-commerce and just stepped down to do his own thing. And I saw that he just started his social media. He has a PR team now. He's trying to grow an online presence as being this badass billionaire. So... Me, with a decent following at the time, was able to pitch them being like, I want to highlight Mark's brand. I, he's so fitting for this. He's a fun guy. This is exactly the type of video he'd want to be known for. And I do think we did this. The ROI for him, obviously, I couldn't pay him any amount of money to get him to do this. <laughs> but this got like 30 million short forms across like YouTube, TikTok, Instagram, wow. and stuff like that. This got a, over a million on long form. Um, so I feel like it, it helped him out a, a decent amount, you know, that's a huge thing. Um, you know, a lot of times you get questions about how do you collab with someone? What does that look like? And what I'm hearing you say is that, you know, you pitch something for him as well. It's not just about just your channel. Come on my YouTube channel. You're thinking about him and you're like, how can we both benefit each other? What is this give and take here? So I, I think that's really powerful. And I think that he came off so cool and like such a fun guy. And my favorite scene is that cut back and forth between him um, playing ping pong and you in the <laughs> you like working. Yep. And it was just yeah, I no. just thought it was so funny. Yeah, that's exactly what I was going for in the video. I like knew the vision of this video in my head. And I think as a creator, that's important. Like now that I've been doing it for so long, I can play the video in my head before I even start shooting. And now it's just bringing that idea to life. So this one, the whole video is already done before I even started. Like I knew what questions I wanted to ask. Everything was premeditated. What a cool looking video this is. I wish we should all be so lucky to be able to do a project like this. All right, I wanna talk about one of your older videos. What can $100 get in Singapore, world's most expensive country? First of all, take us through a little bit of the title. How did you figure out that this was a title strategy that would work for you? I am a YouTuber from New York City, which is one of the most expensive cities in the world. And I also love to travel. So I figured as someone who wanted to make videos about the costs of things while I'm on my travels is figuring out what $100 can get in different countries and what better place than going to uh, rather than one of the most expensive places in the world, which is Singapore. I mean, that curiosity there, definitely. But we also have that tension. We have so much tension with the fact that we have the most expensive 
country and then we have a hundred dollars you know what can we really get it sounds like we're not going to get a lot and that's the curiosity we're talking about yeah we're well, gonna have to watch and see all right let's watch for 30 seconds and this is a video that's three years old so my guess is your production values and your production sensibilities are different than they were three years ago so let's just watch the first 20 30 seconds and then i'm just going to kind of drill you a little bit about what the decisions you made then and what decisions you would make now if you had to remake this video so let's take a look Singapore has been crowned the most expensive city in the world for five years in a row. And for my trip to this city, I'm going to have only $100 to see just how expensive this city really is. So let's see what we can get. I just feel so good, good, good. Now, we're only 20 seconds in, but you've established a lot of things. First of all, you've established kind of um, the stakeholder, which is yourself, what's going to happen, why you're doing it, and then now you're doing this establishing side. So let's start from the beginning. Um, what were some of the reasons that you chose the establishing shot right up front and then kind of zoomed into you a little bit to talk a little bit about what was going on and then back out to another establishing shot? What, were the, what was the thought process behind yeah. this? Yeah, so even to clarify, this video is four years old. I remember editing their, this during COVID. And <laughs> to go back to the very, <laughs> very first shot, the thumbnail had the iconic marina bay sands hotel which is like that floating boat hotel right there on the left that you'll see and i wanted that to be in the first shot because i think it's just you know so unique and grabs people attention this is a great landscape shot time lapse also creates this sense of urgency so i feel like starting with the shot for the first couple seconds like that really captivates and intrigues and pulls the audience in um, there's also some cool like cinematic shots like this where you can like see me as the subject. It's a shot that you know I shot, so I feel like it showcases what the rest of the video is going to look like, and it's going to be of this higher production value. The voiceover then is reeling them in with the curiosity too. So it's like you're going to get a high, highly produced video. You're going to get some information out of this. I'm telling you what it's about. And I'm creating that curiosity so that you keep watching. And I just want to point out how huge it was that that opening shot is matching the thumbnail. I clicked on this video. I have expectations of what I'm going to see. And then immediately I see that and I'm already I'm I bought in. I'm sold. I'm going to keep watching because I'm getting what I'm promised as a viewer and my viewer satisfaction most likely is going to go through the roof. So now that we've looked at kind of what you decided to do three and a half, almost four years ago. What would you do if you had to make this video today that you did not do back then? Ooh, that's a great question. And talking about what we were talking about before, I think I did assess this video when doing this video in Dubai, which just a quick caveat about my Dubai video, it was my quickest video ever to 1 million views, which was in like a week. And that video now is like 4 million views. So, you know, it was kind of like use this, which has about almost Yay. a million views, 900,000 views to then make the Dubai one even better. And what I did in that video is the first three seconds of that video shows the Burj Khalifa, another iconic building, which is also in the thumbnail. And it's like how I said before, how there was that time lapse, which almost creates this sense of urgency of like what's going on because there's so much going on, you're captivated. And the first two seconds of the shot is a fast forward uh, push in to my face with the Burj Khalifa and holding a hundred dollars cash in the camera. So taking the time, like when filming that video to be like, we need to find the best composition for that first two second shot. So it did pay off in the end, but it was kind of difficult to find. So it kind of just is a reminder to creators that like, even if you're stressing over something, if it's for the first intro of the shot, it is so critical to make sure it's perfect. That's what we want to hear. That's exactly what we want to hear. That That's your chance. People click on that video. You want them in with the title and thumbnail. You have such a small amount of time to keep them watching. So prioritizing that as a creator is, I mean, 100% where you have to put that extra effort in. And look at you. You made another video. You assessed this. Well, you've made tons. But you made that second video super intentional looking at this one. And it performed, I mean, how much better? faster yeah, too yeah, at least four times better and it's only been up for like a year and a half so who knows how many views that can can get to in this amount of time i, I do have a question about um the outro here and i i will talk a little bit about uh these other videos maybe going into more detail in the middle but whenever i'm watching a youtube video i love this little pull-up thing and you'll see down here at the bottom there was a big peak here and as someone who's coached a ton of creators 
This makes me super happy because I love to get retention high right before you can put up end screens. So let's see what happened here. They got so many people watching and let's talk a little bit about what you did here. So let's go meet Halid and, and go to Marquee. See how Singapore nightlife is and how expensive it is. This looks like what they call the gush moment. So obviously very visual, but in here is where it actually peaked. What, what about your story would you th do you think would have made people kind of rewind or, or play or, you know, is it the shift to this or what do you think this was? That's super interesting. Maybe, yeah, they're like going to rewatch the club scene. Um, I'm not too sure. So this is interesting. I did not know that. Um, I really don't know. Do you, do you have any ideas what this could be so from? Yeah, I mean, first of all, th this doesn't necessarily mean your retention graph is going to look the same. This is kind of the public face facing view of what we're seeing. But nine times out of 10, something is going on here that made people usually go back to. So my guess is they watched this, they saw this thing happen, and they're like, whoa, 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 and they wanted to go back, but they hit a little bit too far. And they ended up going kind of right in here because they knew this was before the thing. And I, I agree with you, it's probably this part that they actually were yeah. watching a lot more of, but they had to go before because they want to see it from the very beginning. That's likely yeah. what happened. So you had this gush moment, which is a thing that um, as content creators, we try to get as coaches, we try to get content creators and put this moment at the very end of the video that like pays off everything. Um, you see Ryan Trahan do this all the time at the very end where he, you know, gets people like if he has to do the, the major reset, it's within the last couple of seconds of his videos. He does it all the time. This is how you get people to get to the end of your video and then want more for content from you. So whenever you see this, it's a very good sign that you did something right towards the end. The next best thing to do after something like that, especially if you've planned it ahead, is to get them to watch another video. And in your particular case, you have an entire series that makes sense for this type of viewer. Yeah, it's got to be similar. That's a huge takeaway here is... When people watch a video, chances are they're going to want to watch something similar after the fact. And if we can get them to click that second video without them even thinking about it, that's how we start ending up on our homepage. That's how we get that browse traffic. And that's how YouTube is like, hey, let's show this to similar people. We, we understand who their audience is and who likes it. Let's start showing it a little bit more and see what happens. So that's that's huge. That's I would say another takeaway there is that we didn't hear... Any type of ending language, we didn't hear you, you know, talking to the camera. All right, well, so thanks for, you know, there was nothing there that was like the video is about to end. I'm going to click off. I'm done. Um, so that's huge. It's really amazing to see that at the end of a video. OK, we're going to get to your most popular video, the one about Switzerland. Now, first of all, before we get into the video, you called it the most perfect country on the planet. Why did you pick that title and why this particular thumbnail? So this video definitely had a little bit of luck to it, or at least I felt that way because I wasn't even going to make this at first. I was going to Switzerland with my girlfriend at the time, and Switzerland is actually so dang expensive. So I was like, you know what? I need to make a video. If we're traveling here for two weeks, I need to work. I need to bring in, you know, at least hopefully this video gets 100,000 views and can help pay for this trip. <laughs> Little did I know it would become my most popular video ever that I get stopped on the street about all the time from that one video. And I think it makes sense now looking at it why it did so well. And I think a lot of it has to do the thumbnail. The thumbnail actually was really easy to make. As a creator, you know, sometimes like a thumbnail you can stress over for oh, days, yeah. which happens to oh, me all yeah. the time. Where this one just like came to me so easily. I was like... Oh, this place looks like a fairy tale. I took a photo of just that backdrop and then photoshopped myself and my girlfriend at the time in it, which she was wearing like this cute little white dress and looked like a little princess, which goes along with the whole fairy tale thing. There's like a little church that looks like a fairy tale yep. church. The font choice. Yeah, the font choice was crucial. Just using like the font.com and typed in fairy tale or like fairy cartoon <laughs> or something like that. That was uh, kind of the thought process going into this like how can i make this feel like shrek is gonna be in this video i just love this there is so much depth to this one photo that your eye can't look anywhere else this is the clickability we're talking about we have such a defined foreground middle ground background and the text is enhancing this it's not dominating it it's not taking like 
priority. We are visually setting expectations and that text is just enhancing it even more. I just, this is, this is so, this is such a good thumbnail. Yeah, absolutely. Definitely gives you the, 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 the kind of fairy tale uh, vibe you're looking for. But let's watch the first 30 seconds of this thing, first 20, 30 seconds, and see if you accomplished your goal very early on. Let's take a look. Switzerland is perfect. From having the cleanest water to the most unbelievable landscapes. Switzerland is a real life fairy tale. It's constantly at the top of the list for having the country with the highest quality of life, but also the top of the list for the most expensive. On top of all this, Switzerland is a neutral country. They don't pick sides in wars, and they remain peaceful by any means necessary. Even if that means they have to blow up a bridge. After traveling this magical country for the past week, I wanted to share with you all what traveling the most perfect country on the planet is like. All right, the first 30 seconds. Pretty amazing. Different than different than what you did previously. The, the first 30 seconds here isn't exactly what you did in the, the last video we looked at, but you do establish, you do bring yourself in here. There's a lot of things going on. Kind of take us through your thought process in this. Yeah, so with those $100 videos, I do try and make it feel like you're getting punched in the face. I'm trying to grab your attention. With some of my more cinematic videos and travel videos like this, I wanted to captivate you in a different way. I want you to feel like you're learning something about the country, like in this, you know, you just learned how they don't pick sides in wars, how they will even blow up a bridge if they have to. You're learning about the quality of life, and it's just beautiful cinematography. So I think that with the music uh, really lures the viewer in to want to see more, and I think it's just so visually appealing which also makes you want to watch more as well. Oh, it's it's beautiful, all right. But what stood out to me, like huge, is everything you're saying is represented visually by those clips. You mentioned water, we see water. You mentioned happiness, we see people laughing, flying through the sky. <laughs> you say fairy tale, we see this castle again. And we're tied right back to that thumbnail. So it would be a lot different if you were like, oh, everyone's so happy. And then you're showing me, you know, a, a drone shot. It doesn't add up as well. And there was so much intention with matching those that it's just it's so it's so good to watch. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Now, I want to look at these bumps. We talked about this earlier. You can see these vi these visual bumps. And again, you have another one, big one towards the end and so even a, a nice one over here. So let's real quick take a look at these bumps and see what is going on. Good morning, guys, from the beautiful Interlaken, Switzerland. After our super long travel day yesterday, we made it here at around 10 p.m. and just passed out like a ton of bricks. But there's nothing like waking up in a new place and just being amazed by all of the incredible sights, especially from your hotel window. And before we do get on with our action-packed day, I did want to show you guys what $300 a night gets you here in Interlock in Switzerland. Check this out. Yep, that's it. <laughs> what a cool little moment. And people loved it. Look at this. People loved it. I like love the letdown. I feel like I'm about to see something <laughs> so awesome. You're like, nope, that's it. Moving on. <laughs> I'm just like. <laughs> but with these moments, act, look at these moments connect with your audience. What about that made you go, I need to just do this little funny thing? That one was critical. I just know from doing videos similar to this, you know, I, I called it luck, but obviously I've been making videos for so long. So like I just subconsciously know what the viewers like, I guess at this point, and I know, I always know to showcase how much a hotel is in my videos because people are usually going back to that and kind of assessing for themselves like, wait, what, that was $300 or that was $40? I would never. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so especially when you have something that's like so expensive and you get something so small or vice versa where you get something that was so cheap and it was so luxurious, that's when I feel like the audience gets so interested. Good tension between those two. It just, it's so funny. Let's real quick bump into this one and then one more and then we'll move to your last video. Take a look. That was, there's a moment there, look at this. And this is where it peaks, where you are actually cheer, cheersing the viewer. Like, so watch this. It just starts to peak right here. Boom. 
Tell me about that. That's brilliant. I just thought it would look cool. What are your thoughts? You think that that was something that got the audience to come back? Teach me something. A hundred percent. You lit because visually it's something kind of fun, and you mm-hmm. can see the proofs in the pudding. Um, and then they kind of they kind of watch a little bit more. Of course, they can see the the beautiful young lady there too. But they came back for this really oh. interesting. Oh, did he just cheers me? You almost have to rewind to go. Is that what I just saw? Did I literally just see him cheers me? And Am boom. I friends with Brett? Did we just cheers? <laughs> Is that my best friend now? We become friends. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I do that all the time. So I, I'm going to keep doing it. I think there's something this, to be said something. when you can have that camera actually be that person on the other side, when you can isolate it to a right. one-on-one situation and we're not thinking of the viewer as a group of people and just that one person. And I'm over here and I'm like, yeah, cheers, Brett. Let's figure out, let's see how you ended this video. Because again, very important to have people watch to the end, especially so you can pull up your uh, end screens. I, I, I talk about this all the time. Let's look at the last about 30 seconds of this video and see what decisions you made to hopefully keep the retention real high. After traveling Switzerland for the week, I would still concur that this country is near perfect. From the adventures to the landscapes, this place looks straight out of a Disney movie. If you guys did enjoy watching this, then make sure to hit that subscribe button and we will see you next week. And there's that thing again. Look, you knew it was something cool. You knew. Stop right you did now. It again. Come on now. You it's knew. just it's there as a creator. It's just there. Now I'm doing it in every video. I mean, I do it in most videos, but now I know like, wow. All right. People like the cheersing, you know? Yeah. Some people don't realize that they do this thing and it just makes sense to them, but they don't think about the analytical part of it. And that's what Jen and I do with creators all the time, which is we look at the things you do and we try to explain why it actually works because a lot of creators will just do something just because like, oh, it's fun or whatever. And not realize that that actually was something that connected you to your audience and if you do more things like that you connect deeper to your audience so again mm-hmm. it seems like such a simple little thing but man what a powerful little thing you came up with without even realizing it mm-hmm. amazing stuff besides youtube videos and stuff what type of projects are you working on that we might be interested in now that we know that like you have some of the dopest videos on youtube well thank you very much but i'm trying to combine my love for business travel youtube and bringing that together into a series where I am currently starting a wellness tea company and documenting going from zero to $1 million. So I just spent the past month in India and Sri Lanka meeting with the suppliers and gonna be on a weekly basis showcasing what's working for me, what's not working, and the sales with the goal to hopefully go to one million in one year. So it's been really cool to use my storytelling capabilities and turn this concept into reality and bring my audience along with me and, and learn about business through YouTube. I love it. So, I'm excited yeah, for it. I can't it wait to yeah. watch along. Brett, it's been absolutely incredible to have you with us. We thank you so much for your time. Of course, tell us where we can find you on all the socials. Yeah, on Instagram, YouTube, TikTok, all Brett Conti. Brett, thank you once again. We salute you. And if you want to have something just like this, where you can have experts look at your content, we have one-on-one here at vidIQ. Links in the description, and we'll see you.